Hey there, it's Matt Parker. Uh, I want to talk about something today, something that we've been doing recently that I think is just a good example of how so many of our daily decisions have been formed for us long ago that we don't even realize you know, how many things that we think are our own opinions and our own daily decisions and our viewpoints and our beliefs and the way we interpret things, how that's kind of been molded and shaped for us throughout our lives to where it's almost as if these are all somebody else's opinions. And we're not going to get into any, any you know, controversial politics or, or healthcare stuff. It applies to that. But it also applies to every single thing we do all the time, every day. So, with everybody's been raking and cleaning up leaves the past few weeks, at least here on the East Coast, Mid-Atlantic region. Um, so I felt like that was a good, a good opportunity to use that as an example. So, this is a two-part example. The first part is, this Home Depot leaf bag. I have a few things to say about it. Um, first of all, I see the orange here, and I know it's Home Depot. I know that from down the road. If this is blue, I know it's Lowe's. If it's red or yellow, I guess it's Menards. I don't know, but around here, everything's Lowe's or Home Depot. I know that from down the road, but I can't identify the different types of grass and weeds in this yard. And I can identify a few of these trees, but not many of them. And those things are so much more important to my survival and health and longevity than knowing that this is Home Depot. Um, but that's not the point. The point is, this Home Depot bag has a few tips on it, if you ever take the time to read them, which I don't know who does, but I read it recently. So these four tips right here, there's four things. Um, the first one's about fertilizing, and I have to read it to really see it. But the first one is about fertilizing regularly, I think. So let's talk about that real quick. What's that mean to us? Fertilize regularly. The healthiest lawns are fed four to, time, four to five times per year. So when we hear fertilize and feeding your yard, I picture somebody with a little, you know, you dump the bag of fertilizer into the little thing with the spinning wheel on it, whatever that's called. I can't think of what that's called. And you wheel around your yard spreading fertilizer. You know, or maybe we picture, I don't know, I picture Kevin Bacon in the original Footloose movie, you know, throwing the big bags of feed and fertilizer over his shoulder, you know, at the, at the feed silo. Well, that's what we've been taught to think fertilizer is, that it's chemicals and that it's in a bag and that you buy it at Home Depot. But fertilizer for your yard, feeding your yard four to five times a year, you know, that's cattle, that's sheep, that's goats, that's having some, some wildlife or some farm animals running around, even if it's chickens in your backyard. That's what fertilizes your yard, but we don't think of it that way. We think of it as go buy something from the store, and that's what we've been taught to think by, you know, TV commercials and advertising and, you know, just our society in general. Capitalism teaches us to buy things. So we see the word fertilize regularly. That means we need to go to Home Depot more often and buy more fertilizer. Um, but I think if you know we got back to using chickens and cows, well, that might be that would be a much healthier version. So what else does it say? It says the second one is mow tall, only cut off a third of the blade of the grass at a time. Okay, sure. Is that really true though? When I look at cattle, um, horses out in the field, they take the blade, they take the grass all the way down really, really low, as far as I can tell. The trick is, they let it grow back up really tall for several weeks before they eat it again, if they're managed properly and rotating properly and, and moving in a herd fashion. They don't do it every week. So, mowing your grass tall is really just to keep your grass pretty for the neighbors, you know. You'll hear the neighbors say that they rake their leaves because they want it to look good and be pretty for all the neighbors. We're not thinking about raking our leaves or keeping our leaves where they are or trimming our grass in a manner that's good for nature and for health of the environment and ecosystem. We're just doing what looks pretty because that's what we've been taught to do. All right, what's the third one here? Control weeds. All right, control weeds. Okay, third one, control weeds. Weeds rob turf grasses of nutrients, light, and water. Okay, well, what's a weed? Who determined that daffodils and all these other things that I can't name because I know more about Home Depot and Lowe's than grasses, who determined that these are weeds? The weeds mix in with the grass and make the grass not look as uniform and clean and neat. But there's nothing in nature that's uniform and clean and neat. Everything is mixed in, multiple species, um, and the, the term weeds, most, if not all, of the things that we call weeds are medicinal plants. 
that our, you know, a hundred years ago, our Appalachian, um, you know, mountain men and Native American medicine men or medicine people knew were medicinal herbs. But we've killed all those in the name of having it pretty and neat and orderly and clean and green. So control weeds. Well, you control weeds with Roundup, you know, or some chemical fertilizer, or some chemical weed killer. If we just let the weeds take over, we'd have a healthier ecosystem, we'd have bees, we'd have butterflies, we'd have wildflowers, we'd have all this stuff. It wouldn't look as neat and uniform and orderly. It wouldn't look like, like a golf course. It would look more like what you see when you go out in the field in nature. You know, so what do we want? Do we want it to look like when we go out in the woods in nature? Or do we want it to look like a manicured golf course? Well, most of us want a manicured golf course, so that's why we need to control weeds. All right, last one. Last one is water deep, water infrequently but thoroughly. I don't think I have a whole lot to say about that right now, except if you weren't cutting it so close, if you weren't using chemical fertilizers, and if you weren't using chemicals to kill the weeds, it wouldn't need as much water. It wouldn't, the grasses and the plants, they wouldn't be fighting against all the chemicals as much for their survival. And they wouldn't need to be watered regularly. They would survive on the normal amount of rain that we get periodically. So that's kind of the first part. The second part is, why are we picking up the leaves at all? Why do we have a leaf bag? And I don't mean, you know, environmental and recycling and, you know, the wastefulness of making this bag. I mean the idea, the concept that we need to clean up our leaves to keep our yard neat and clean and orderly. Nature didn't make a mistake by letting the leaves fall. Nature didn't decide the leaves fall at the end of, at the, end of the season to, to save the resources of the trees, but the leaves are just a waste product. Nature didn't decide that. There's no waste in nature. The leaves fall to save the tree from having to use resources so it can be dormant over the winter. But the leaves, they break down. They become a natural fertilizer or a fodder. They, they give habitat, habitat and shelter for insects and you know, small wildlife and beetles that need some sort of shelter and cover around the ground. They break down and they get digested and recycled and become a natural compost from the, the natural fungus and microbiomes in the soil. Those funguses and natural, the funguses and microbiomes that are eating the leaves and recycling them are therefore fertilizing the grasses that lay underneath it and they're fertilizing the root system of the tree that dropped the leaves, okay? Their leaves are not there for us to get out of the way because nature made a mistake. The leaves are there to help further provide nutrients for the roots of the tree that's gonna need next spring. Um, they also, I've heard, could be looked at as providing a natural blanket to provide just a little bit of shelter to keep the roots and all these bugs and insects from freezing as easily because they have a little bit of shelter from the storm. So. That's kind of my quick rush through example using the leaf bag and raking leaves as an example of how the most, the simplest mundane thing you would never think of, you know, that's been predetermined for us. We've been taught by advertising and by going to the hardware store and by, you know, society and by being neat and clean and orderly that we need to be cleaning up our leaves every year. And we don't. And I just think that's an example of every single decision we make every day about the products we buy and how we choose to approach wellness health care versus reactionary health care and you know maybe a bunch of political stuff I don't know you know that's all been formed for us and fed to us so I encourage you to use this example however off track it might be really think about the things you're doing every day when you make decisions and you'll find that these mundane insignificant things you're doing you know, you don't even know why you're doing them. Somebody else has convinced you to do them, you don't even know why. It's really a waste of your time. Uh, that's enough for now. Thanks for watching. Bye.